Welcome to the start of a new vlog. I'm starting this vlog in the garden today because look at these beautiful copper image tulips. They're gorgeous. So pretty. Got copper image. The red ones are called Rococo. These are daffodils. This one's called Sweet Ocean. And I think this one's either Gay Tabor or Acropolis. I can't remember for sure. Everything is in dire need of watering right now. Look at all those yellowing leaves. And some of my pansies, violas, are flopping over because they need water. We have had uh, someone here working on our water heater and they shut the, my hose off yesterday. So I have to go down to the basement to turn it back on. The purple tulips are just getting started. We have Black Hero and Black Parrot over here. These are just stunning. That deep, rich purple. I love them. This bed is pretty much finished. Uh, the alliums are getting started, as you can see right there. So it's time to take all this out and replace this with something new from the greenhouse. Lots of dahlias, lots of cosmos. <sighs> okay, so I just got a delivery from FedEx. Two of the things I know what they are, one of them I'm not sure. So let's see, the first one, I already opened this one, but it's we're just still picking up little bits and pieces for the bathroom and we've just been using like a old glass cup that we've had lying around. And I got a dedicated uh, like toothbrush holder for it. Um, that's just something I got from Wayfair. The other one is a trellis and it's a massive package, so I'll show you that when I open it like outside later. But this one, I'm not really sure. It's a fragile sticker all over it, so I just want to be careful when opening it. Jacqueline and Andrew, a little wedding gift to celebrate your first date. Love you both. Cannot wait to celebrate, Callie. <gasps> Oh my gosh! Okay, so Andrew and I had our first date at a place called Cafe Steinhoff in Brooklyn on October 10th, 2018. It closed during the pandemic. They didn't make it during the pandemic, so we can't go again. But I guess Callie commissioned um, a watercolor artist, it looks like, to do an illustration of Cafe Steinhoff in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh my god. And if that could not be more perfect, I wonder if they coordinated. Let me go get a gift that Brittany got for me, one of my other really close best friends. So Brittany got me this one of Strand Bookstore, which is where Andrew and I are going to get married. Oh, Kelly and Brittany, thank you so much. I absolutely, I'm so touched. I love it so much. <laughs> meal plan this week is my favorite ever baked chicken recipe. I'll leave it linked as usual and a potato salad recipe that I'm trying for the first time. Almost forgot to mention both recipes use mayo so I made a homemade mayo to use in my recipes this week. Guys homemade mayo, homemade aiolis, they are an absolute game changer. If you've never tried homemade mayo before, you have to, you have to. Hello, I'm sitting in my hallway, a weird place for me to sit, but it's because Andrew is in the bathroom painting. Not making this explanation better. <laughs> no, I'm not watching him go to the bathroom. Um, he's painting and I'm working on my laptop in the hallway, but I did just go downstairs to get the mail and two exciting Packages are here. So you guys know we wouldn't be moving for a very long time. 
I say a very long time, but like, you know, three years-ish or so. And um, I'm gonna want a greenhouse. So I got a catalog from Hartley Botanic, and I also got one from Alitex, just to kind of compare what they have, uh, compare the prices, start saving my coins. So I'm very excited to look through that. And then I also got already one of the um, orders of patterns I placed on Etsy. So for my new wedding sewing project idea, I'm using the term wedding sewing, uh, not in the sense of a wedding dress, but just like sewing for items associated with the wedding. So bachelorette party, rehearsal dinner, um, honeymoon stuff, things like that. Uh, so for the dress that I showed you in my last video, I'm going to hack with two different patterns and I'm going to use this for one of them. And I bought another pattern just for the neckline, which is like a suit set pattern. I've been looking for a pattern like this actually for quite some time because it's not an actual wrap dress. It's a faux wrap dress with a zip up the back and there are quite a few inspiration patterns in my queue, like inspiration ready to wear images that I save on Pinterest uh, that have a like faux wrap style. So I really wanted a pattern in my stash to be able to like hack with for those kinds of clothing. So I'm gonna use this for that upcoming project. I just have to wait for the other one to come in, the suit pattern I ordered from two different Etsy sellers. But I ordered two patterns from this one and the other one, oh, I didn't tell you, this one is Vogue 1672. And then the other one that I got is Vogue 9236. A while ago, I showed you guys some patterns or some images that I was like thinking of duping or just like inspiration for upcoming projects. And this pattern is one that I could hack with for this particular dress that I saw and loved. I'll put a picture of the inspo on the screen. It's got this kind of like seam detail that opens up into, it's like a pleat basically on both sides. So I'm gonna use this to hack that dress, hopefully. So those are my two pattern additions. I'm waiting very impatiently for the other one that I ordered uh, to start sewing this new wedding associated dress. Uh, I just got a shipping notification today, so hopefully it will be here soon. Andrew and I are on our way to our local pub, but wanted to stop by over at the Arbor Garden. Look, look at this place. It's crazy. Rosebuds galore. Oh my gosh, there's three bushes right here and then one climbing rose, so four in this area. I planted them close together to kind of grow as one bush together. It's just a way for me to get a lot of different varieties into a small space. So I'm so excited to see all of them bloom. I can't believe all the buds on these. It's insane. And my irises also budding up. The catmint is, it's huge. It looks like something like fell into the bed because it's like all flop. It's like there was, when I came up, it was just like laying with this huge portion in the middle, like a hole. It was very strange. Um, but yeah, the catmint is getting enormous. My salvias getting ready to pop. This area is gonna be insane. And then my rose bushes back here three other new ones and another climbing rose on the back. The catmint, again, in the middle, just like flatting out. What is up with that? I'll have to look into that. Yeah, that is so weird. So see, there's like a big, it's like a big hole in the center. If you know anything about that, let me know. The lupins over here are also sending up bud shoots. That is enormous compared to its size last year. It was so small last year. Same for these salvias. Oh, it's just filling in so beautifully. I can't wait for this to bloom. The newly planted roses are all looking good. That's an established one right there. And that's where I planted a lot of my uh, ranunculus and anemones. I got some salvias in pots. One of them is already starting to bloom. I'm gonna save these to put at the black house garden, I think. 
I put a rose bush right here as well, but I anticipate that this one will likely grow slower because it doesn't get as much sun as the other areas of the garden do. Although this one right here seems to be doing just fine. Got some foxgloves getting ready. My hookera is flowering. The hostas are looking beautiful. <laughs> I have just finished putting together my new obelisk trellis. It's a lot taller than I was expecting. <laughs> Definitely taller than me, which is great though. I mean, it's the rose it's going for is a tall one. It's gonna be like an eight foot climber. So it'll be well. It is very well made, very sturdy. This is a really, really nice trellis for a very reasonable price, I think. I got it from Wayfair. I like the kind of gothic style of it. It comes in two different colors. I'm showing you the back right now. I lined up all the seams, but you get the idea. It kind of has this like um, metal floral design on it. And yeah, it's a really nice, sturdy piece. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. I'm out in the garden. Andrew has started working on restoring his frame and I have put in the new garden trellis. It's so pretty. I love it so much that I think I'm going to get a second one to put over here to have like a little bit of symmetry and add some height to this part of the garden right here because I am going to be taking out this fig tree. So if I put in a tall trellis and then a t another tall plant because I think it needs that height right there but I just don't want the fig tree I want to do something different so and all of my insanely beautiful black hero tulips and black parrot tulips the alliums are about to start which is just going to make this bed look so cool because of like all the different kinds of purples mixed together yeah it's all looking really good Good afternoon. Today we are in the Arbor Garden, squinting. Um, I brought a bunch of dahlias over here to plant up in the beds. Made lots of progress. I've planted a full back row over here. So far that is 14 dahlias planted. Good evening. We are in the kitchen. Andrew is making us a feast. What are you making? It's a surprise. Apparently it's a surprise. Um, I started with a recipe from this cookbook that we discovered that we had that we didn't know we had. So you started with a recipe that's in this cookbook that we forgot we had called One Pan, Two Plates. Yes which is crispy sage pork cutlets. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm deviating significantly from that. And, Improvising. And um, He's going fancy. I'm trying to. So what are you doing right now? Um, I'm gonna make a like pea puree with um, that has kind of like some not quite ragu, not quite saltambuca vibes to it. So mm -hmm. I got some carrots. I'm gonna have the peas. It's gonna have uh, shallot and garlic, and yeah. it's gonna be all mixed up and have some bacon in there because why wouldn't you why have not? bacon? In there? <laughs> <laughs> What's on your pork? Um, so the pork has a uh, miso rubbed all over it, and mm -hmm. it's gonna get. Um, it's gonna get some fresh ground pepper and then it's gonna get seared. And um, so I'm going to like um, 
rub some ground sage on there too, and um, so like really give you like a Flavor sage punch. punch. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a close up of the cookbook. One pan, two plates, more than 70 complete weeknight meals for two. I didn't even know we had this. I don't remember where I got it. I feel like it's a possibility that I might have gotten this from work, but I don't know. But this is the recipe he's starting out with, crispy sage pork cutlets, but deviating quite a bit from that. Mm -hmm. Smells really good, the garlic. Mm -hmm. the fancy crispy sage pork recipe that The trellis that I ordered for my clematis arrived. Turns out there's two of them in this package, which is great. Um, and I just put it in and planted my clematis, which has grown double the size when it arrived. It was as tall as that stake that it came with, and now it's over double. So this grows very quickly. I'm excited to see what it does this season. Hello, it's Friday afternoon, the weekend done with work for the day. It's been a productive, nice day. Um, this morning before work, I finished Circe. I surprised myself with how much I really enjoyed it. I will say in the beginning, Circe, the character, really annoyed me, but as the book went on, um, I really got into it. And yeah, I feel like the story really keeps you kind of guessing. You, I didn't know what was going to happen within like the first few pages of reading it. And sometimes I don't mind that with books, like when they're really predictable, it's, it's okay. It doesn't like always bother me, but it was nice to read something where I didn't know what was going to happen as it went on. So I really, I do recommend it. I thought it was a really engaging read. Next up, I'm definitely going to read City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. So many of you on Instagram recommended that to me when I was like trying to decide which of my books to read and that's one that I had. I saw it in Strand. Um, let me just get it one second. Here it is, Elizabeth Gilbert's City of Girls. I saw it in Strand and the um, blurb on the back really intrigued me. I just felt like it looked really good. I hadn't heard anything about it. I had it like had no prior knowledge of the book. It just looked interesting in the store. So I picked it up and lots of you uh, really loved it apparently. So I'm excited to give that a read. That's definitely next up. Um, I put my new trellis in, which I'm really excited about, and planted my clematis today. It's clematis Jack Manny. It's got these really beautiful like ultraviolet purple flowers and they're really big they're like four inches my um neighbor one of my neighbors has one in her yard and it is so beautiful so she totally inspired me to get one because hers is just so amazing plus i really love purple garden schemes so yeah so i planted my clematis today what else Oh, our faucet, our faucet um, got installed today in the bathroom. So finally we have running water in there, which is really nice. I'll do like a little bathroom reveal once more of it is together. It's still not finished yet. Unfortunately, one of our sconces was broken. The one I showed you was fine. So I, I didn't or open the other one, but the other one was broken. So they have to send us a replacement for it. But as soon as we kind of like have more of it together and our mirror is on back order right now, 
such as supply chain life right now. Um, but once I get more of it together, I'll do like a little before and after reveal and show you how it turned out. But yeah, so it's Friday evening. I still have one more pattern that has not arrived for this wedding sewing project that I want to do. What am I going to make tonight? Should I start a project that's not that one? Should I just wait until tomorrow? Maybe I could start City of Girls tonight. Or maybe I could convince Andrew to go to our local pub for a drink and we could bring a book or so. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what we should do tonight. I don't have, like, because I'm feeling a little lost without having a sewing project. So, yeah, I mean, I want to really just want to start something. My mojo is back. I feel the mojo, but I can't. I don't really, I want to start this project. And I don't want to start something else while I wait because then I'll have to, yeah, I'll lose momentum on the other one. Mika is unfazed. She doesn't care about my problems. <laughs> we just stopped by Home Depot. Of course, I'm checking out the plants that they currently have at the moment. We're fixing the brick wall in the garden that's attached to the garage this weekend. So Andrew's come here to get some supplies for that. And I'm gonna take a look around and see what's here. a bigger garden. I really would love to plant a yew hedge. I just think that would be gorgeous. We are back at the house. This wall right here is gonna have some maintenance done to it. As you can see, a lot of the mortar is kind of crumbled away from it. So we're going to do some maintenance on that this weekend. Aren't they beautiful though? These are copper image. They are rather short but the blooms are just so stunning. Look at that. And I love the combo of this with like the patch of daffodils behind it. It's just such a beautiful vista. And then the brick, it's just wonderful. I love this combination a lot. These tulips though, Black Hero and Black Parrot. Black Hero is the one that's shaped more like a peony. And then Black Parrot is the one that has like the ruffly foliage. These are just incredible. I will definitely be ordering more of these next year to replace like probably where the pinks are. I'm just in love with these purples. everyone it is Saturday Andrew and I have been busy bees tidying up the house which has just been kind of a wreck honestly um, as we were getting the bathroom finished up it's so close it's almost there for at least what we can do we still have some things that are on back order so we've been tidying up the house I've just got myself a coffee and I think I'm gonna go out into the garden and see what's new over there I have been stalking the delivery of my pattern so that I can get sewing on my project. I have been out in the garden for about an hour now, just kind of snip snipping away all of the done tulips over there. I'm going to compost those and then I'm gonna plant with something new. I haven't fully decided what I'm going to plant where. I kind of just do it intuitively based on what I have and just kind of place and lay things out. So you can see I've cleared a lot of it. There's a lot of stuff that looks like weeds in here, but it's not weeds, it's poppy seedlings. So I'm excited for that. Here's some of the tulip carnage. A lot of you have asked me why I don't save the bulbs for 
tulips and the reason is because the garden is so small if I like let, like waited and let the foliage die back and then dug up all of the tulips and then had to save and store those bulbs for next year then that means that I couldn't plant that with something else like I'd have to wait for it to die back in the meantime and to be honest my space is just so small that I just don't have I feel the luxury of waiting for tulip foliage to die back so I treat tulips as an annual actually maybe someday when I have more space and I can like wait for that tulip foliage to die back then I would consider um, saving the bulbs but while the gardens I have are so small it's just it's just kind of like a waste of time when I need that space to be planting something else look at all of these gorgeous violas oh I'm just so impressed I love this classic yellow and purple this one's called antique shades these are both antique shades I've also brought a few of my trays out here. These two trays in particular, especially that one with my zinnias and my scabious, are being attacked by fungus gnats. It started when I started these indoors, actually, but they've just carried on into the greenhouse. Luckily, it doesn't seem to have spread to a bunch of my other greenhouse plants, but hopefully by bringing them outside, they'll start to recover a little bit. We are in my old neighborhood, Bay Ridge. That's the building I used to live in, right down there with the little right white front. <laughs> um, yeah, because we wanna go get some lunch. There's this Mexican restaurant here called Las Margaritas, and it is the best. It is the best Mexican food in New York, in my opinion. Yes, easily in New York. Mm-hmm, delicious. While we're here, we also have to stop at our favorite coffee shop, Cream, to get a bag of beans for Andrew's cold brew endeavors and some cold brew. It is here! The other pattern I've been waiting for. This is Vogue 9351. And I bought it specifically for this detail right here on this jacket because it just so closely mimics the uh, neckline detail of my inspiration piece and it's the only pattern I could find that had it so I'm really excited I'm going to be combining this piece right here or this pattern right there with this pattern right here um, I'm gonna figure out a sleeve situation I'm not gonna have a sleeve I'm gonna do like my inspiration just a sleeveless um, sleeve <laughs> or lack thereof and so yeah, I'm gonna combine, kind of like overlay the patterns to get the effect of this neckline um, around this wrap style dress, which is kind of like a faux wrap. It's a zip up back. So I've been looking for a pattern like this for a while for other pattern hacking needs. So I'm excited to have this in my stash and I'm excited to give it a try. Hopefully the drafting will be similar to the other Vogue wrap dress, but you never know. So. Fingers crossed that this works out. Hello, so I just got a package that arrived from fabric.com and so I figured I would show you the fabrics that I got in my order and then maybe some ideas for what I'm thinking I could make with them. I'll leave all of the fabrics I show you in the description box so you can check them out if you want. I can't promise that all of them will be in stock though because I know I bought the last bit of one of them. so. Um, but they're really good usually about restocking, so hopefully at some point you could get them if you can't right now. 
So the first one is this fabric right here. It is a rayon linen blend. I've actually worked with this same exact fabric and the same color before. I really, really love it. I made a top actually. It was like a flowy top, a Rachel Comey for Vogue. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. I think I must have gotten rid of it. So I didn't love the pattern, I will just say. It just wasn't very flattering on me. But when my sister was here, I finished the top in question when my sister was here, she tried it on and it looked so good on her. So I just gave the top to her. But I loved the fabric so much that I really wanted to have it again in my stash because there are so many occasions that I would love to wear a white linen something at any given moment, much less this being uh, the year I'm getting married. So there's gonna be plenty of opportunities for me to work with this, even if it's outside of the wedding. And I just love it. The rayon in the blend gives it a really nice like drape and silky softness. It's a really soft fabric in general. Um, and it was just really nice to work with. I could see this working for a variety of applications like I don't like tops, a dress, a skirt, you know, like so many things. This would make such an amazing suit, although maybe not for my skin tone because I feel like a white suit, this is like too bright for a suit, I think for me, but um, it could, with the right skin tone, a white suit would look absolutely phenomenal. But I think like a dress, it would look really great. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking a dress. I bought four yards of it to give myself a lot of opportunities and options. If I'm buying fabric and I don't know what I'm going to use it for, I'll buy um, two yards if I'm making a skirt, because I can get a half circle skirt out of that. So a two yards for a half circle skirt. If I'm making like a midi length dress that's got like strappy and it's not really big sleeves on it, then I'll usually order three to three and a half yards. And if I want to make something that's maxi length, I'll get four to four and a half yards. I usually make uh, dresses that don't have like big statement sleeves on them. I'm not really a statement sleeves kind of girl. So usually I can get away with four to four and a half yards. It really just depends on the pattern. So whenever I don't know what I'm getting, four yards for a maxi or four and a half. So I bought four yards of this thinking I might want to make like a longer dress out of it. So that's the plan for now. I don't know exactly which pattern I'm going to make, but yeah, I'm sure I'll find plenty of uses for that. This does not, okay, I ordered four yards, but this does not look like four yards. Yeah, no, this is definitely like one yard at best. Okay, so I'll have to contact them about that. And that's kind of a bummer because I really wanted this fabric for a dupe project. So I'll put a picture on the screen for you. I saw this gorgeous dress that an influencer I follow, Josie, um, fashion mumbler. She featured this dress in a recent haul video that she did and I loved the dress so much but you know of course I love sewing so I'd rather try to make it myself and it was this green gingham fabric and so I tried to find like a green gingham to make it with too. I don't even have a pattern idea for it yet. I'll just have to search my patterns for something to hack it with but I loved it so much that I tried to find a green gingham Apparently, this is the one that I bought that I knew was going to be sold out, so I'm sure they just underestimated the amount they had left on the bolt, so I'll just need to contact them to get a refund for that. But yeah, oh, what a bummer. I mean, I'll still save this because maybe it will come in handy for part of that project, so I guess I'll be waiting for this one to come back in stock eventually. But interestingly, I did buy a second uh, gingham in a different color because I really liked the tones in this one. So I don't typically go for really high contrast fabrics. It's not really like a look that suits my style. So I thought I would get this one in like a sand taupe color because it's not as overwhelming on the body. It's like a half inch check and I don't think it like takes quite as much presence. It's not so loud as this one would be. So I can see myself making something full length quite easily with this gingham, whereas this would be like a really statement dress, potentially overwhelming to wear. So that's why I got this one. So it sort of worked out. I really like the color. So yeah, this is really beautiful. I believe it's a Robert Kaufman. Again, it'll all be in the description box. 
Uh, I can see this working for a lot of things. It's got, it's not, I wouldn't say a fluid drape, it's got more of a crisp, it's not crisp, but it will definitely like stand up on its own. So this would make like a great skirt if I wanted it to stand away from my body a little bit more or a dress with a skirt that kind of has like a flowier um, bottom, well not really flowy, more of a structure. So this would make a great like structured garment. So yeah, I can imagine like a corset top with this, with like a structured kind of skirt, how pretty would that be in this? I think, I don't know that I'd use this for a top or a blouse unless it was like a really form-fitting blouse that needed that structure. It's not got the drape of a blouse per se, but it would make a good shirt. So yeah, this has a little more structure to it. A lot of good options, and I loved, like I said, the color specifically on that one. This next one, I actually, have bought in a second color a long time ago. Actually, let me just show you the dress I made. So I made, this is the same fabric, different color. I made this dress a long time ago. This is, I made this dress, I wanna say sometime around like Christmas last year. Um, this is McCall's 8104. I modified it just a little bit to not have um, like a button band around it. It has, has a clean edge to it. It's not like a visible, let me see if I can show you a picture. Do you see on the picture, it'll focus. Do you see on the picture how it kind of has like a band that goes around the entire thing? I just wanted a clean edge on mine, so I modified it by sewing a larger size and smaller, or smaller seam allowances. Maybe, I can't remember exactly what I did, but it has like a clean edge on it. Anyway, so this is a nice, really like flirty, drapey dress. I really like it. Um, it's really pretty. It's not really work appropriate because it's quite a deep V on me, but it's a great like date night dress and I love this bottle green color and the fabric was really nice to work with. Has absolutely fluid drape and would work for a number of dresses that kind of suit my style. I love those kind of like flowier skirts and dresses. So this would make a great skirt. It would make a great like flirty flowy dress. It would make a great blouse. This would work for so many applications. And I just think this blue color is so beautiful. It sort of, when I saw it on the website, reminded me of um, the Vila from uh, Beau Baton, Beau Batons, Beau Baton in Harry Potter. It really reminded me of that color. It's kind of like light, fresh blue. And you can see like the texture on it. It's like the dot dobby print. It's made up of like little stitches actually that give it that texture. It's really nice. I like it more than just like a plain fabric. It's got a little bit of interest, but it's still a plain color, so it's not too much. Um, yeah, I could see this being really great for something with like a flutter sleeve or a petal sleeve or something. Yeah, lots of options. A great summery color, whereas that color is maybe a little more like fall, winter. Not that I really care about that stuff. I wear black all year round, so. Yeah, really love that. And then last but certainly not least, this beautiful, another blue, kind of like a denim color. It's a rose, a small rose print fabric, has little white roses and white flowers and like these little brown centers in the rose. And I just thought this was really pretty. This is a rayon crepe fabric so the texture is like a little bit different can you see it's kind of got like a little bit of a crinkle texture not too much to it just a little bit and I like the print on it too I feel like this might be over like too much for like a full on dress although this one is but it's black so I think it's easier we'll see but I feel like this might be a separate it's like a skirt and a top I only got three yards of it, so clearly I was thinking something in like a midi length territory or a skirt and a tank top maybe or some, something like that. But yeah, I really like that one. Fluid drape, really beautiful. It's made of rayon, so it'll be nice and breathable. And that's it. That's what I got in my little mini fabric haul. 
Uh, I would love your pattern suggestions or ideas if you see anything in here that like really jumps out at you it's like oh you should make this with it please let me know I would love to hear your thoughts oh and while we're here this isn't something I acquired recently I got it a long time ago like two years ago now this is most definitely I feel a wedding fabric and I was not sure if I was gonna make my wedding dress or not um, in the beginning but I've since decided, no, no way, I don't want that stress. But I have this just in case I ever decided to make my own wedding dress. And I only have two yards, it's all that they have. Actually, maybe I have three, I have three yards. Is that it? I can't tell. Maybe I have four, I don't know. I either have three, three to four yards of this fabric, it's folded on itself. And I'm not making my wedding dress, but I would love to hear your thoughts about what you think I could do with this. It's kind of a tricky fabric to use because it's a border print and striped on both sides. So the border has this really lovely scallop detail. It's got these gorgeous appliques and embroidery on it, little pearls in the center. And it's got this scallop on either side and then the appliques and the embroidery in stripes going vertically with the grain on this kind of like ivory netting, ivory tool backdrop. It's a gorgeous fabric, but I'm sort of stumped on what to do with it because of the stripey nature of it. Like if it was just this on the border with cream tool going for the rest of it, I think it would be a lot easier to work with, but because of the stripe, I'm just, I don't know what to do. So I would love to hear your thoughts about what I could make with this for maybe like a rehearsal dinner dress or a bachelorette party dress, or maybe I'll change outfits during the wedding, like an outfit change for the reception and do something with this. I'm open to your suggestions and ideas. Please help, because I have no clue what to do with this and i would love to use it obviously this is the year this is its time to shine so please let me know what you think would love to hear your thoughts on what i should do with this a little bit wild right now but I have cut out all of my pattern pieces including the ones for my mashup so these two pieces are from the jacket pattern and then all of these are from the dress pattern so essentially what I'm going to do is lay these pattern pieces on top of each other matching up the shoulder seams this is a shoulder seam and this is a shoulder seam so I'll match these up and then cut out the wrap dress piece using this neckline right here. Lining up the back pieces of both patterns, they're almost exactly the same. So I think I'm just gonna leave the original pattern piece as I have it because this curvature, like I said, is almost exactly the same as the other pattern. So I think I should be good with the pattern that I have. for a rainy walk with Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet is my neighbor's 
dog and she asked if I could walk him this afternoon and I am so happy to do so. I love dogs so much. It's just that Miga and Jafar do not love dogs so much. So I can't have one, but I love them. Say hi, Hammy. Hamlet's a pug. started on the brick wall on the garage. In case you were ever curious about what's behind here, it is a window. They just boarded it up. I'm sure this was a beautiful window someday. The house was built in 1920, so everything back then just looked prettier in my opinion. So this morning I'm in the greenhouse and I'm going to pot up some of these seedlings, not all of them, only the herbs. So we have sage, dill, uh, basil, cilantro, and oregano in here. And we plant those in some planter boxes that are right outside of our apartment window so that we can access them for cooking. So it's Andrew's idea, I love it. So um, I'm just gonna put them in their own little separate containers for him so he can plant them outside whenever he's ready to put those in the window boxes. are such a satisfying thing to grow. Most of them are so easy. For some reason, we have so much trouble with rosemary. I cannot grow rosemary to save my life. Um, I can germinate it from seed, but I can't keep it alive. I think the problem with it is that rosemary likes a really um, not nutritious soil. They like really crappy soil and the soil that we have is like quite fertile because I get really nice compost from a local um, business called, well it's not really, I guess it's a business, a local nonprofit called uh, BK Rot. They do so much good work for the community and I just, I just love supporting them. Anyway, their compost is really nutritious and so I think our soil is just too nutritious for rosemary. But um, if you haven't ever tried growing herbs, you can grow them in pots on a windowsill. Like they're so, so simple and gratifying to grow and they just smell incredible. Like even from the first leaves, like the first set of true leaves smell exactly like the plant. It doesn't take, you know, long at all for them to mature. So, oh my gosh, this one's oregano. Oregano spreads a lot. So oregano and mint both need their own pots, never plant oregano and mint, mint especially, in a bed with other things that will just take over and choke out anything else that it's in. So they need like their own pot. You can see it's so spready already. Oh, it smells so good though, so good. 
And as you can see, my rolling pin turned dibber that I got from the thrift store in the last video is working a treat. It's absolutely perfect for what I need it for. I've been getting lots of good use out of it already. This cilantro seedlings. There's like four seedlings in here, so I'm gonna have to separate it, but look at these roots. Look how long, they, they grow so, so quickly. They're very vigorous. Here are my herb seedlings potted up. I'm kind of taking, I wouldn't say a risk, but I'm just experimenting this year. Potting up is honestly one of my least favorite tasks, although with the dibber and having the greenhouse where I don't have to worry about being messy like I did inside the house, um, it's not so bad, but it's just kind of faffy for me. I really don't like it. So I'm kind of experimenting this year with just leaving them in the cells to see if it really stunts their growth um, in any significant way. Perhaps a risk to take since this uh, is the year I'm getting married and I'm growing a lot of flowers for the wedding. But um, yeah, we'll see because uh, I just feel like potting things up. Like, yes, I know they would be happier being potted up because look, these roots are like coming out of the bottom of the cells but I just can't be bothered honestly and I don't really have the room to do it like this is a full greenhouse. I've come over to the arbor garden just for a minute to grab the salvias that I have in containers when I bought them from the nursery last year I'm going to plant them over in the black house garden but look roses are about to bloom these beautiful little pink buds on my Olivia Rose. Also have the first anemone bloom. It is very beautiful. And look, the lupins. These are the three salvias in question. This is Salvia Caradonna. It's probably my favorite perennial salvia because I love the color. It's like a warm purple and also the foliage is really like upright which matters a lot in a small space because if it starts like spreading widthwise, that's less plants that you can <laughs> fit in when you want to experiment with as many plants as possible in a small space. So this upright foliage works really well for an urban garden and it also just looks tidier than um, the ones that kind of like spread and flop a little bit, which I love as well, like someday in a bigger garden. Those will be absolutely gorgeous, but for now, this one's definitely my favorite and it's very popular with the bees and really any pollinators like bees, um, butterflies like it. I have made so much progress today. I can hardly believe it but I've planted some grasses, one there, one over there. I've planted several dahlias. I've planted verbena bonariensis. I've planted salvias all over. Uh, I planted rose campion back there. I didn't plant anything in this bed yet because there's still several tulips um, that are in their prime right now. So I don't want to pull those out prematurely. I'll replace those uh, as soon as I can. I planted some snapdragons along the edges of the garden, which I think will be really pretty. Planted a lupin right there. I have three more. I'm not sure exactly where I want to put them. I might put one over here in this bed to kind of have some continuity with the one that's there, or I could put all three in this bed here. So yeah, and that's, I'm leaving those for right now again because the uh, tulips are still kind of in their prime over here so I don't want to pull any out too soon and they're gonna be working on this wall tomorrow they did the inside of the garage today so I don't want to plant anything lest it be damaged but yeah it's looking good lots of Cosmo seedlings some Nicotiana has been planted I've just kind of been like pulling things out of my stores as I um, find a place for it. It's kind of like having my own little plant nursery, which is really quite fun and cool. So what is left of the dahlias? I have 14 left and that's great news, honestly. I have plenty of space for those in the beds over here and a lot of space still at the other garden. So I'm probably going to be doing a mass planting of zinnias and a mass planting of cosmos somewhere, again, for like the production side of things, because those are two flowers I'm going to be relying on very heavily for the wedding and also um, some Rudbeckia 
uh, what's the Sahara. It's like a, the autumnal tones rutabecchia. So I'm going to be planting a lot of those as well. I think that's all the gardening I'm going to be doing today though. I've honestly been out here for, I don't know, at least five hours. So I've gotten a good chunk of things done, feeling good about it. I laugh to myself honestly because I want a bigger garden, but even these two small gardens I can make take up a lot of my time. I'm a big perennials fan though. I really like perennial gardens. They're just a lot lower maintenance. So once you get those backbones in, um, then it's kind of easier to maintain, I think. So any future garden will be mostly perennials, I think. I think this is quite possibly the most eggs we've ever cooked for one week. I'm using eggs in my lunch. Of course, I eat deviled eggs for breakfast and Andrew is also doing eggs for his breakfast this week. So we have almost three dozen eggs in here. I realized the other day that I did not show where I got in the process of this new project. So I've cut out most of the pieces except for two of the skirts and the back, two of the skirt pieces. The skirt is composed of like four different pieces, I wanna say. Um, so I need to cut out those and I also need to cut out the back piece. The uh, dress is fully lined. And I do want to fully line it because it's a white fabric and it's quite, um, it's still, I wouldn't say like see-through, but when I held it up to my body, I felt like I could still see like the shape of my body underneath it. So for the bottom, that's kind of a problem. But this fabric is quite densely woven. Like it's very fluid drape, but it's quite heavy. I already have a dress that I've made out of this same fabric, just in a different color. Um, it's a light blue. It is not see-through, but again, it's not white. Um, but I'm nervous that if I were to fully line the skirt of this dress that it would be so heavy. So what I think I'm going to do is look for like a cotton gauze or something that's like really lightweight to line the skirt with. I'm going to use the same fabric to line the bodice, but I think I'm going to use a different fabric in white to line the skirt because um, I think it will be too heavy if I used all of the textured tensile viscose for the, uh, for the project. So that's where this one's at right now. I just have to cut out these remaining pieces. It was just a lot of cutting and I needed to take uh, Hamlet on a walk that afternoon. So I just took a break, but hopefully I'll get back to it this afternoon. I'm really anxious to begin working on this project. I need to check my stash and see if I have a cotton gauze or something suitable to use for the lining for this because if I don't, uh, I mean I know I'll be able to construct all of the bodice but I won't be able to attach the bodice to the skirt without having uh, that lining fabric. So I'll need to hop on a fabric website of some sort. My go-to's are fabric.com, Blackbird Fabrics, Mood. Um, I love what uh, Kelly of Picnic House Supply stocks. I'm going to be using a fabric that I have from her in an upcoming project soon. So yeah, I'm just really uh, enjoying the process of this so far. Well, I say that. I'm actually not because I hate cutting out projects. But once I cut it out, then I will be enjoying the process of this project. I love the sewing part. But you know, with drapey fabrics, you have to be quite careful about cutting them out and the grain and so it, things kind of slide around on you so the trickiest part for fluid drape fabrics is the cutting process i think but yeah so I'm looking forward to getting to the sewing i'm about to take my lunch break but i wanted to check in with you guys because i'm really enjoying my makeup today and i used a new and inexpensive foundation so I thought I'd tell you guys about it. It's the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Glow, and it's amazing. So as you guys know, I've been using, uh, let's see, a few videos ago now, I showed you this Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This stuff is so nice. Like the finish is velvety smooth. The coverage, I would say, is like medium coverage. It's really, really beautiful. My sister, though, turned me on to this one a while ago, and I'd only tried it a couple times. Um, but I've been so addicted to using this lately that I was like, I haven't really given this a full go, and so I tried it today. It's a little bit lighter coverage than the Giorgio Armani. It's a little bit thinner, so it's like buildable and really pretty, but the texture is really nice. I have always loved the L'Oreal Infallible Powder. I have like four of these in my drawer 
right now um, in various stages of use. I need to throw out the old ones, but this is like a new one that I purchased recently because I really love this powder. I've been using it for over a decade easily. Um, my most recent powder purchase though was a Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flop. The Charlotte Tilbury, what could that be? Ironically, that was a new <laughs> makeup item. Anyway, as I was saying, the last powder that I purchased was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Hello, can you see yourself in there? And it is a beautiful powder, but it's quite expensive, I feel, for the amount of product that you get. Like, you can see I've almost used up every last ounce of this. So I'm about to switch back to this after using this one to kind of do a try again. Like, I've loved this for years, but since I've been kind of used to using this one for the past few months, I'm going to be interested to see how... I feel like going back to this after using this one, I'll let you know, but I still, I love this powder. I'm really glad that I tried the uh, foundation that goes with it because it is really beautiful. It's what I'm wearing on my face right now and I don't use that much. I use the equivalent of like one pump and I just kind of spread it around to like even out my complexion a little bit. Um, my family has a history of rosacea, so my cheeks get like really reddish and bumpy, so it's nice to have this on the days that I need it. Not that I'm diagnosed with rosacea or anything, it's just like in my family, so it's possible that I've had it, and a facialist once asked me if I have it, so yeah, really, really love this and wanted to tell you guys about it. Maybe I'll do like a makeup I'm loving at the moment, even though I just told you some of those now. So I guess that's it for me for now. By the way, I'm wearing my new top that I recently finished. I really like it. I was kind of on the fence about wearing it today, but I was like, Jacqueline, you're wearing the perfect pants to wear this top with it. Why would you not wear the top? If you're not going to wear it now, you're not going to wear it ever. And so I put it on and it's taking some getting used to, I think because it's high neck and I'm not normally somebody who wears high neck things, but it feels really good and secure and comfortable. And I love the open back and it just, it feels nice to wear. So I'm hoping that if I just like make myself wear it more, I'll actually wear it more. But yeah, anyway, all right, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.